these spaces. So for now we are talking about the eigenvalue equation, eigenvectors and eigenvalues, uh, and eigenspace. You know what this what the space is? A space can be spared by a specific vector. So by definition, so if we provide here a definition on the eigenspace, then the eigenspace it is defined as S, S including all the vectors X such that AX is equal to lambda X. Okay? So this means that for each for each lambda I we obtain eigenvectors which includes XI and this XI they define an eigenspace. Okay, so with examples we'll try to make this clear a little more. Then, regard, after the definition of the eigenspace, we have some important relations regarding the eigenvalues, the lambda i. One of the essential properties is that the determinant of any matrix A, this is equal to the product of all the eigenvalues from 1, 2 to 3 of the lambda i's. And then we can say that the trace of A, this is equal to the summation i from 1. Sorry, this, this is M, this is also M of lambda I. So the product of the lambda I's is equal to the determinant, and the trace of uh, lambda I's is equal to the trace, to the sum of the lambda. So here we have 0 times 4 times 12, which is 0, for the previous example we just covered. And at the same time, it looks that the trace is going to be 0 plus 4 plus 12 is equal to 16. If we have a look at the matrix that we had before y, which is something which is able to... Uh, wait a second... Uh, okay. And by the way, since we started, let's, let's share something here, for example, now. Your entire screen. Share. So, in our screen, let's write down once again the, the original matrix, which is AA. This was 404, 404. 0, 4, 4, and uh, 4, 4, 8. So this is the matrix that we had, we had it on the board, which was probably, you still see it on the board, which is, you can find it somewhere here. So all the major information, it's, it's over there. It is best if I step aside. Uh, okay, so looking at these numbers, which, which you can see it on the board. Hide. Present everyone. Okay, so uh, we can see from this matrix that the trace is four plus four plus eight. So this is uh, what we have here, and uh, and another thing that we can observe here is in fact that uh, we can write something like this: p is equal to polynomial poly of a a. Okay, so this is the characteristic polynomial of the matrix which we just solved before uh, a while. And this coefficient that we see here, the way to read this is that this is 1 times lambda cubed minus, uh, minus 16 lambda squared plus 48 lambda plus 8 times 10 to the power minus 14. Uh, this is a constant number, lambda to the power 1. Okay, so you write all of these numbers. So what you get here, it's 1, one times lambda. Uh, minus 16, sorry, this is lambda cubed, sorry about that, this is lambda cubed, and by the way, wait a second, can we plot this one? No, wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, I'm thinking about something, this is lamb, lambda squared uh, plus 48 times lambda plus 10 to the power minus 14, this is equal to 0. So this is a polynomial, and we need to get what are the roots of this polynomial. Now, this 10 to the power minus 14, what is 10 to the power minus 14? When you saw this one on the board, did we have this number? No, no it was zero. No, we didn't. So 10 to the power minus 14, what this is, so of course this is an error. So uh, computers, you see this epsilon? Epsilon is the neglig is the number which is negligible. So epsilon is in the order of 10 to the power of minus 16. 
So forget about it, okay? Because uh, we cannot write numbers with infinite precision. The only number to which, which is with infinite precision, it is six, it is three. Because these are integers, we can easily find them where they are in the uh, in the space. If we plot it, we can easily find. It. But pi, we cannot find it because pi is going to be 3.14, 15, 92, something. So if we are to write the pi, this is what it is. If we do here format log, we are to write the pi. This is pi, but it's not the end of it. So always we have some errors. And these errors include some numbers in this order. That's fair enough. Now. So you can't uh, uh, precisely compare to floating points. Say it again. To floating points may give some errors in uh, comparing with each other. Sometimes. That's correct. That's, that's correct, yes. <laughs> but one thing that can be more useful for you is to use these commands here. Like, uh, so we can generate, this is the, much short. So you can use this commands for the for any matrix, and let's call this one P is poly A. I don't know if this A is still here, and S is still here, but I believe. So let's try if we can get P A. This is poly A. Let's see if we can find anything here. This is the polynomial, which is lambda Q uh, minus eleven lambda square plus fourteen lambda. This is equal to zero, and we need to find whatever we need to find. This is, so these numbers, you can have a look in here. This is PS. Then you can find roots of A. This is equal to roots of PA, which is a polynomial. And this would be the roots. Apparently, this is 9 and uh, 1.46. But let's go back to our problem that we have lately been working on. Okay? Because this A, we are, for a moment, we are also looking at these two, which uh, were related to the questions from the homework, where we had these matrices, and we had to figure out what was the dimension. Now we have this matrix, right? We try to identify the character polynomial, which we can easily determine like this. These are the coefficients. This is zero. Discard this one. And then we try to identify what are the roots of this polynomial P. Here there are the roots. It's 12, 4, and the 0. Okay? So here this is the 0. Discard this one. This is 4. This is 12. Then, uh, so this is the roots of the polynomials. At the same time, we can find the eigenvalues by looking like this. Eigenvalues of AA, this is what they are. Here, so the same result we get either by finding the roots of the polynomial or by right finding the eigenvalues of AA. Here we have a zero, this is a zero, this is the four, similar, 12, another 12. Now we can also uh, write here the eigenvalues V and the capital L, which would be the eigenvalues. So here, what we observe is that uh, we have this matrix V which has all the eigenvectors, okay? This is the zero eigenvalue. The first column here, it belongs to the zero. This is four eigenvalue. The second column belongs to the four. The third column, which is another eigenvector, belongs to the 12. Now, what we can do here is that uh, uh, if you look at the board, let's assume that we have V1 is equal to V, all columns, first column, so this is the first uh, the first column of V, the second column of V, we can define this one as vector V2, and the third column of little v, we can define it as a vector V3. So now, let's check for a moment what is V3, and V3 is for the 12, right? V3 times the square root of, of 6. We get here 1, 1, 2. When we saw the eigenvalues of this matrix that we are dealing on, and again, what was this matrix we are working on? Here we have it, right? And we take V3 times the square root of 6, this is what we get, 1, 1, 2. So apparently, that V3, it is normalized to 1. Because the magnitude of the of vector 3, its norm of V3, we get 1. Or, another way to identify this one is, how do we find the magnitude of a vector? What we do is that we do the V3 transpose times V3. We get 1. Then V2, trans, V2 transpose times V2, we also get 1. So it looks like they are all 
uh, normalized to one. And then uh, the V1, if we want, so what is V1? Here we have it. V1 times the square root of three, we get one, one minus one. So apparently this was the magnitude of the vector that we came up uh, before a few minutes when we saw the same example in the previous session. So this is also uh, one, one, zero. So this is one minus one, zero. So this is the zero we have to deal with. Now, another interesting thing is the following. We have here V1, V2, and V3. What is the angle between V1 and V2? How can we find it? Who can answer this? We can use uh, the yes. product uh, rule. So the product of V1 times V2 would be equal to the product of the magnitudes times the cosine of the angle. That's, that's right. So the first thing, transpose it. The transpose in this programming language is like this. So you see here V1, the transpose of V1, we do it with this single line, okay? And V2 transpose, here it is. And V3 transpose, here it is. And V3 is again like this. So what we can do to find angle between V1 and V2, we can do V1 transpose times V2. This is zero, right? You see 10 to the power minus 16. V1 transpose times V3, this is zero. And V2 transpose times V3 is also zero. So it looks like V1 v and V2, they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So the eigenvectors of this matrix AA, which we have here, uh, all the eigenvectors, which is the matrix V, this shows that uh, this, the first column is 90 degree with respect to the second, and is also 90 degree with respect to the third. Now, this has a meaning because uh, uh, the matrix, apparently, it is, uh, what's the name? Uh, it is normalized and it's also orthogonal. We're going to discuss this a little more in detail in the, in the future sessions when we provide the formal definition of these specific matrices. But matrices that look like this, let me think for a moment, this is, uh, yeah. So matrices that look like this, we can check for a moment what is V, times V transpose. Uh, who can read this matrix? What is this matrix? It what can is it? the same horizontally and vertically? Say it again. It's the identity matrix, right? It's the identity this is the identity matrix, matrix. that's true. This is the identity matrix, and you can see because uh, because this is one, this is one, this is one, and these are all zeros. Ten to the power minus seventeen, ten to the power minus seventeen. So this is what they are. So it looks like we are dealing with a matrix V whose transpose uh, is also the inverse. Okay, so this is something uh, unique. You can take this note down. You can write this on your notebooks. So apparently we can come up with matrices which serve as a basis, but at the same time, all the columns have magnitude one, and all of them, they are 90 degree with respect to each other. And uh, it looks like the inverse of V, this is equal to uh, V transpose. Now, of course, it shows us as something wrong, but inverse of V, here we have it and V uh, transpose, here we have it, they are exactly the same. Or we can do this, inverse of V minus V transpose, we get, this is all zeros. Okay, so uh, let's stop this presenting. So uh, once you're looking at the board, so let's come back to to this. Now, when we move to the to this octagon line, we just wanted to also have a look at what we had here, and let's continue where we left. Now, the formal definition, which makes possible for a matrix to be diagonalized, is the following. So, for any 
domain matrix, which is n by n, if one can find, of, or if we can find, n eigenvectors, then A is diagonalizable. Okay, so this is what we can uh, what we can say. So for the matrix that we are just working before a while, uh, apparently, since we can we could find three different eigenvectors, we can say that uh, this matrix A it is diagonalizable, and if we multiply as we wrote here, P inverse times A times P, we're going to get the matrix D, which is the diagonal uh, version. So uh, yeah. And uh, another important uh, statement is that singular matrix, or not statement, no, this is a theorem. So, singular matrices have same characteristic polynomial. Now, what we mean with this is that, first of all, we have to remember which one were the, the similar matrices. Similar matrices were like this, where P inverse times A times P. But this D, uh, in fact, uh, we notice that at least in the examples we saw so far, what were, uh, wait a second, so if two similar matrices have the same characteristic polynomial, then they have the same eigenvalues too, right? So if this is true, because this is going to have a polynomial of the order n in lambda, okay? And the A would have a polynomial in order n in the unknown variable lambda. And let's not forget, we can also have another matrix B, which is B1 inverse minus A. Professor? Yes. Can you lower the camera a little bit? Uh, okay. Thank you. So we know the definition of similar matrices, and it looks like D and A are similar, B and A are similar, and the, they have the same characteristic polynomial. Apparently, they have also the, the same uh, eigenvalues. Now, the characteristic polynomial, I think we know how, uh, how they look like. We found a couple so far. And uh, let me try to find an example. see whether this is diagonalizable uh, or, or not. First of all, let's try to ident identify as much as, as possible. The first thing that we do, we always do the following. So this would be equal to 4 minus lambda, 1 minus 1, 2 minus lambda. Then we, we try to identify the characteristic 
polynomial. And the current basic polynomial here, it's going to be one whose uh, that describes that the, the terminal of this uh, matrix will be equal to zero. This is the characteristic polynomial. We expect a polynomial which is P2 in lambda. And let's see what we obtain. Here we have 4 minus lambda. This is lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus, what is this? 9. 8. Plus 1, 9. Plus 1 times 9. Okay. So this is equal to, this is lambda minus. Only one solution, 3. This has only one solution. So if we are to plot the solution here, this is 1, 2, 3, the, the points which satisfy this equation, they look like this. The only root is down here. What is this? This is the graph of y equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we have only one uh, eigen value. So lambda 1 is equal to 3, and lambda 2 is also equal to 3. So let's try to identify whether uh, of what we get here. So in this case, we'll have, let's use this part, A times AB, this is equal to 3 times AB. So from these equations, we can write the following. We have 4A plus B. Four a plus b. This is equal to three a. And the second equation, equation, which most probably is linearly dependent on this, but let's confirm it by writing it first. Minus a plus two b. This is equal to three b. We're having the same equation, so we just have that a is equal to minus b, and the eigenvector will be uh, one minus one. Yes, and here what we get here, this is minus a. This is equal to b. So it's the same vector. So this means that the solution here is equal to one minus one. Yes, that is true. So the matrix a, it is, it's two by two. How many eigenvectors can we find? So since we can find only one eigenvector, which is one minus one. Then we say that A uh, is not diagonalizable. So A, it is not uh, diagonalizable for the reasons over which we, uh, we discussed. Okay, then, okay, so we discussed about the linear, so it, apparently if we have similar matrices, this is what we obtain. Then we can talk about the geometric representation of the eigenvalues and eigenvalues. And uh, regarding the geometric presentation, in fact, uh, what we can say is that, in fact, it's, it's pretty much obvious. So in this case, if the eigenvalue, or if the eigenvector of this matrix is equal to one minus one, I believe it is uh, easy to figure out that if we multiply this matrix A with one minus one, it's going to simply get a vector which is three minus three, right? because I can value it here at 3D, but let's try it. So in principle, uh, the operation of a linear transformation or of a matrix onto the eigenvalues, onto the eigenvectors, sorry. So given the same matrix, four minus one, one, two, times the eigenvector, which is, in this case, 4 minus 1, 1, 2, 
times 1 minus 1, this is simply equal to 3 minus 3, okay? So we just preserve the same, the same orientation, the same direction, and uh, we multiply it with a specific uh, value. Now, okay. Now, another comment we can make, so I have a couple of examples, we just stress more on the, on the, on the concepts of changing the basis, but since uh, I intentionally stressed too much the importance of the changes of basis since chapter 7, a lot of discussions which is in chapter 8, if we did not stress it too much, we could go over those, otherwise it would be a repetition. Dushimit bazave. Jet capital with start. We do at the beer shum persarity. So let's state before we go we cover this example, I want to state another uh, important relationship which states that matrices with distinct uh, icon values. So if we have a matrix which is n by n. If it has n So then this is uh, A is diagonalizable. Now the reason we mean this is that uh, if we have n distinct item values, then all of these is going to have at least, uh, and also linearly dependent, it's going to have at least one item vector. So, n, this statement, n distinct item vector values, immediately implies that we have n distinct or n completely different from each other item vectors. So, this would be equivalent to one theorem which, which we just uh, deleted here. And, uh, as an example, it could be a matrix. Yeah. So here it is the question: What makes what is more essential? What makes a matrix A by M diagonalizable? What do you think? Should it have n eigenvalues or should it have n eigenvectors? Which one would you choose? Which one is more uh, important? The first one or the second? I think it should have n eigenvalues and n eigenvalues it still has n eigenvectors. If it doesn't, so you choose one. I choose the first. You choose n eigenvalues, okay. What about the... Uh, I choose the second thing there. It's important to have eigenvectors. Vectors are 
more since important. we multiply, we form a P matrix from these uh, eigenvectors, and we multiply this matrix with A. Okay. Well, we don't have well, the values. You can create vectors, so you have to have the values first. We can have two eigenvalues, but they can be the same. What and these are the second two. And these six eigenvalues. What about this case? If we have n smaller than n eigenvalues, does it again values? If we have, we might also have this option. Okay. So we can have a matrix which is three by three, and we can find only one uh, eigen eigenvalue, or only one or, or two okay. eigenvalues. So what would happen in this case? We cannot diagonalize it. Okay. So, but one thing is the following: that uh, sometimes let's not uh, uh, so let's not forget where we find eigenvectors. What are the eigenvectors? Eigenvectors, they are in the null space of this expression, A minus lambda R. So we're trying to solve this, which means that X is in the null space of A minus lambda I. Okay, so let's not forget this. If X is, is in the null space of uh, A minus lambda I, uh, what can we say here? Uh, we are discussing about the dimension of the null space. What is the dimension of the null space? What could it be? We remember That's n or equal to n. Yeah, I mean, it's equal to the nullity, right? It is equal to the nullity. So the dimension of the null space is equal to the nullity. But we have seen cases where the null space of a specific matrix, we used to write it also like this, S1 minus 1, 0 plus T, uh, 0, Minus one three. In this the case, null space is not zero. Sorry, the null space is what? In this case, the null, null space doesn't contain only the trivial solution. That's true. It doesn't. But also here, the null space did not include the trivial solution. So this uh, one minus one. This is the is in the null space of this matrix A. That's not for, or no. This vector 1 minus 1 is in the null space of this one, A minus lambda i, or lambda equal to 3. Okay? So this means that if we multiply this matrix times x, we should get 0. But the thing, so, and the dimension of x is 1, so the nullity of this expression is 1. But it can be sometimes that the nullity of the A minus lambda i is not 1, it can be larger than, larger than 1, it can be 2, 3. So, if we are looking for eigenvectors, we can obtain the necessary number of eigenvectors even if the number of eigenvalues is smaller, okay? So, which means the following. If we have 3 by 3 matrix, so let me give this example. If we have a 3 by 3 matrix, we can obtain two eigenvalues, 1 and lambda 1 and lambda 2. We don't have the third one. Then, what is essential for us, or a possible uh, co combination which may make the matrix A diagonalizable, is the following, is we can have the nullity of the, the nullity of A minus lambda I, this can be 1, and we can have also another option or possibility that the nullity of a minus lambda i, it can be equal to 2. So this means that we have one vector here, two vectors here, we add them up, we get 3, so the matrix is diagonalizable. Okay? So answering the initial question, it is true that to have a matrix A, which is diagonalizable, this is essential, okay? But this is also essential, you were right, you said this is essential because the moment we have n eigenvalues, we did mean, this means that we have immediately n eigenvectors, right? If they are distinct. Oh, well, this should be n, uh, this is a key word, distinct. Because here also we have two eigenvectors, but they are equal. They are not distinct from each other. We can't do much with any other, but this could touch here. So if we have n distinct eigenvectors, this means that immediately we have n like this, but we are not excluding the case when n can be smaller than n, but for reasons which are related to the, to the knowledge of a minus lambda i 
In this case, this is number one, this would be number two. Uh, we may still find that the matrix A is uh, diagonalizable. Do you have any question for what we did so far? No. Uh, okay, then we can give a short break also uh, on this for this session.